So this theory lecture is about the 12 principles of animation. And these are the 12 principles that were set down by Walt Disney's nine old men back in the 30s and the 40s when they first started to establish the fundamentals of, uh, of, of animation, uh, which really haven't changed that much since then. And the nine old men, just in case you don't know, were Disney's key animators. And he called them his nine old men, partly because they were old and all of them were men. But it was a joke on Franklin Del Delano Roosevelt, uh, president of the United States during the war, who had nine old men on the Supreme Court, and he called them the nine old men because they were constantly blocking his attempts at legislative reform. So it was kind of a joke that Disney, uh, well, Roosevelt had his nine old men, and then Walt Disney had his nine old men as well. And they wrote um, uh, a book called The uh, Illusion of Life, uh, which was a, um, actually, I'll just show you a copy of it here. There's The Illusion of Life by Frank Thomas and Ollie Johnston, who were two of the old men. They're all now sadly dead. Um, uh, but their, their legacy lives on in this wonderful book that Frank and Ollie wrote, which uh, is, is uh, incredibly well worth buying. And although it's full of lots of lots of anecdote and stories, it's also got an incredible amount of actual really hard information about how they made the Disney films back in the 30s and 40s and, and also later on. Here are Frank and Ollie, uh, rather elderly with their... Um, with their wives here and you can see here that these are the 12 principles they are timing spacing squash and stretch anticipation staging straight ahead versus pose to pose follow through and overlapping action slow ins and slow outs arcs also called path of action secondary action exaggeration solid drawing and appeal uh, and you'll notice there are in fact 13 here, so it's really should be 12 principles plus one, but 13 just feel, doesn't feel like such a good number. Um, and we'll go through these in turn, and really this is about establishing a kind of language of animation, because during the course I'll be talking, referring to all of these principles, so it's important that you have a, a basic understanding of what they all mean. So here's the book, here's Frank and Ollie's book, which I, I highly recommend getting. Um, and there's another book on this course that you definitely want to get, and that is the Animator's Survival Kit. This is actually the DVD box set, which you can also get, uh, although it's rather more expensive than the book, but very, very good. Uh, but the book is uh, uh, much cheaper and incredibly useful, and it's really now the standard textbook for animation. Any serious student of animation needs to have this book. So let's begin with timing. Timing is how long it takes to complete an action. So a ball, like here's a ball bouncing, uh, can bounce quickly. That would be fast timing, or it could bounce slowly. That would be uh, that would be slow timing. The spacing is the difference between the two poses. Uh, the ball might bounce uh, 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 with wide spacing. It might be a, a long distance between these two points, or a short way, small spacing. And and as the ball slows down, the spacing is going to get smaller and smaller. And the spacing in the y-axis, that is to say the vertical axis, will also get smaller and smaller. In essence, all animation at its core is timing and spacing. Um, those are really the two key elements of animation. Timing, how long it takes to, to complete an action, spacing the, the distance between two poses. Here's timing and spacing as expressed in the graph editor in Maya. Um, now, there's a separate lecture about the graph editor, which you should watch. Uh, but essentially, uh, what the graph editor does is records the curves um, and uh, or the, the motion curves, which are the mathematical expressions of the motion of the object. In this case, we have a bouncing ball. And this is the, the, the green line here is the Y translation, which is to say the up and down motion on security there. Um, so the uh, so the up and down motion is this is this expressed as this green line here and the timing of the action is here one two three four five six seven eight nine ten this is the amount of time that the action is taking and the value in the y-axis is the distance it's traveling so this green line is literally recording how high the ball bounces and that's why the bouncing ball exercise is such a good exercise to begin with because it helps you uh, understand in the graph editor what's going on Okay, so uh, timing. This is taken from the illusion of life. This is this is an idea. This is a sort of um, uh, exploration of how long it takes to do certain actions. And with 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 time, uh, as an animator, you get more experience with this, and you learn how to 
um, uh, you learn instinctively how long it takes to uh, to time things out. In the beginning, you're going to need a stopwatch or to count things off one one thousand, two one thousand, three one thousand, like this, in order to get a feeling for how long things take. Um, so the question, uh, how long does it take for 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 an action to take, is really something that. Um, you acquire with practice. And as you go through the course, you will get better and better at doing this. Some animators become real masters of timing. Here's a clip from uh, Disney's Aladdin. And this is all animation done by Eric Goldberg, who's one of the great geniuses of animation, one of the great living geniuses. He wrote an excellent book called uh, Character Animation Crash Course, which I also highly recommend. Um, and Eric is really the master of, of fast timing. Uh, and this sequence of the Aladdin and the genie in the lamp, I highly recommend you watch it. It is amazing what Eric gets away with and the incredibly fast transformations that he manages to pull off. And that's because he's completely mastered timing and animation. Uh, here's a here's a, a, an advert uh, done by at my father's studio in the 1970s, one of my favorites, the Jovan commercial based on the artwork of Frank Frazetta. Um, very popular illustrator, uh, and and there's some incredibly rapid transition tra uh, transitions happening here when the lightning strikes uh, the warrior hero's sword, um, and incredible incredibly fast timing, but nonetheless it works very very well. If you watch the old Warner Brothers cartoons, you'll see that Chuck Jones, who is the great Warner Brothers director, pretty much invented the very very snappy fast Warner Brothers timing. Here you can see the the the. The legs on the Roadrunner are going around so fast we can't even see them. Really, really fast timing. So the second principle is squash and stretch. And here we're really talking about compression. That is to say squash when the ball hits the ground and then extension or stretch when the ball is bouncing up again. So we're assuming this is a pretty flexible ball. Uh, and we've got squash, that is to say compression, and stretch, that is to say extension. And in, in, in real life, things are squashing and stretching all the time. Here's the same thing closer up. Here's a, a tennis ball flying through the air, stretching out as it comes to the ground, squashing as it uh, as it hits the ground. And here um, is an example from some Disney stuff from the old from the 1920s. Very very broad squash and stretch on this character, kind of crazy squash and stretch. Quite difficult to do this in CG, though it's getting easier now as uh, CG models and rigs become more and more sophisticated. Here's a mouse um, uh, from The Country Cousin, animated by the great animator Bart, Art Babbitt. This is also taken from The Illusion of Life. Uh, and you can see how much Art is squashing and stretching the mouse's face here as he chews. The mouse is drunk here. So there's a lot of exaggerated squash and stretch. Here's some squash and stretch from Cliff Nordberg, who was one of the great uh, Disney animators from the 50s. He was in charge of training. And you can see this very, very exaggerated squash and stretch uh, on this man as he chews here. Uh, and this was used by, this was devised by Nordberg uh, as a training exercise for, for young animators. So they would take these thumbnail poses and then turn them into animation. Another example of Nordberg, his more squash and stretch on a man jumping. Again, very, very broad changes uh, in the action. This also shows uh, some arcs and uh, overlapping action, which we'll come on to in a minute. Anticipation. This is another important principle. Uh, anticipation is really where you are uh, uh, essentially preparing the audience for an even larger action. Here, this Oswald the Rabbit, that was uh, Disney's first character that he created uh, before Mickey even. He's anticipating here. He's reaching into his, his trousers, apparently, uh, and pulling something out. Um, so this motion here is an anticipation for the action, which is the reveal of whatever it is that he's just pulled out of his pants. Here's the same thing with a ball throw. Uh, you've got a character throwing a ball. Uh, these are done by uh, Tracy Chung, one of my ex-students, very, very talented Tracy. Uh, here's the anticipation on, on the character throwing the ball, the action as the character throw the, throws the ball, and then the reaction afterwards. Almost everything in animation can be divided up like this. Anticipation, action, and then reaction. Uh, anticipation here again here's a nice um, image of uh, Donald Duck he's he's kind of drawing back towards screen left he's anticipating we know where he's gonna go we know he's gonna exit screen light screen right you don't even need to animate him screen right or maybe you just need one or two frames at most to get him out but we know because he's anticipating to screen left 
that the only place he has to go uh, is, is to screen right. Um, now, I, we're about halfway through this video. I'm just going to close out here uh, and then in the second video, uh, pick up the uh, rest of the explanation of the 12 principles of animation.